Welcome to the Mold Matters Podcast. Whether you are looking for help recovering from mold illness or just want to learn more about creating a safe environment for your family, this podcast is the place for you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Mold Matters Podcast. Uh, My name is Jeremy Evans. I'm the host alongside uh, my co-host, Mike Adams. Hi, Jer. Hey, how are you doing? I'm great. Um, we we do a podcast called Mold Matters. Um, it's a couple of years in the running. We compile uh, any information we've gleaned from our own professional experience as well as um, collecting information from other professionals. And um, we often frequent academic journals and we try to stay abreast of the most relevant we just, information. We just really love mold. <laughs> Mainly because we have to. It's, or the it's our of, we love the absence of mold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, so we, we've focused a lot on, you know, hopefully it's applicable to, you know, the, the everyday homeowner as well as those yeah. who are in the professional world as well as uh, anyone else who's interested in and especially we talk about health. We, we, I mean, that's actually the whole reason we do the podcast is because it affects your health. Yeah. yeah. That's the only reason mold isn't even a, a thing. It's the only reason that, frankly, it's the only reason we're interested in it. Yeah. Just, yeah. But, and we're part of the small, I mean, we're a small part of this large movement to educate the world on how devastating the effects of it can be and actually how prevalent yeah. it is, which one out of, maybe a hundred people kind of really understand the other 99. Yeah. It's, it's actually don't really amazing. know. Yeah. Even in the, um, healthcare practitioner world. Yeah. A very small portion of those people recognize just how dangerous mold is. Yeah. And, and no, no offense to them. There's, there's right. a lot of reasons for that. And we're, you know, anyways, we hopefully over time, things like this and, and just a collective effort with, with the mold world, all of us united, we can, help figure it out too. Cause there's still a lot of mystery there, but yeah. we, we'd like to, we'd like to uh, present a podcast today. We frequently talk about identifying mold, uh, in our homes and our buildings, because as we've mentioned and, and Mike, you especially have mentioned this so many times, you, you almost have to look for it. Don't look for the obvious, you know, wall that's just covered in mold. Like, like I was at this massive warehouse yesterday, yeah. it was 30 feet high. That's, that happens. Right. But that's not what's most commonly going to happen in our homes. Right. Most people, um, fail, fail to recognize the cumulative effect of a number of different places that may have mold in the home. Yeah. And that cumulative effect of those toxins from a number of different places are what's uh, what's really making you sick. So we've been in homes where, honestly, it looks absolutely pristine in that mm-hmm. home, but someone in the house is sick from mold. And it's just, you know, a little bit here in a sink or, you know, we're going to go over all the places where it can kind of hide and you don't realize, but um, a little bit here, a little bit there, it all adds up and becomes kind of a cumulative effect of that house is unhealthy. Yeah. And, and some of these are review and some of these are new. Uh, it's it's hard to remember all the spots that it can be. It's often not until I'm somewhere in a house and I remember, oh, yeah, this is another spot. We just thought of a couple more this week. We did, yeah. And we're going to talk about yeah. a couple of these. So like like Mike taught us a couple podcasts ago, put yourself in the in the in the spot of a mold spore or in the spot of <laughs> become the mold become spore. Become the mold spore yeah. and you'll know where they are in your house. Yeah. <laughs> where would I want to hide if I was a mold spore? <laughs> yeah. So, Mike, uh, let me... Let me give you some, some word, you know, uh, keywords, and let's okay. have you talk about these areas okay. of the home and and what we can do to identify yeah. mold and maybe even rectify, okay, or prevent mold. So basements, basements, those aren't everywhere. They no. are they are where we live, and they're in many states. Maybe not yeah. uh, coastal areas, but they're very common. When I think of basements, I think of a a, uh, a statement my dad made to me years ago that if you have basement, you've got water. Um, and it, and it's interesting cause I think I've mentioned this before on the podcast, but I grew up and my mom lived in homes throughout her life that had basements and that was where the water damage was always was in the basement. So, uh, when I think about basements, I think about drainage from rainstorms or snowstorms and how it flows into the foundation of the house. Mm-hmm. And then it, 
it uh, we've talked about this before but the water wants to wick from dry or from wet to dry so it's going to wick from that soil mm -hmm. to the dry foundation once that's saturated then it's going to wick into the two by fours yeah once that's saturated now you're going to wick into the sheetrock paper and next thing you know mold will start to manifest there mm -hmm. um it it's um the other thing i think about with basements jer is uh paneling mm -hmm. a lot of people especially it seems like in the 70s thought that it was a great idea to just slap some paneling up against a cement wall yeah and um that almost always has mold what's behind the, it. What's the dis? Why, why is there mold behind it? Well, because you're, you've got a foundation that's very porous that probably is taking on moisture, mm -hmm. and then you're cutting off the flow of air to the face of the cement, on the inside of the house, mm -hmm. and so you've created yourself a little petri dish behind that paneling. It's a nice glue for nutrition. A little glue and little uh, to chemical toxin. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, why is it when you walk down into many basements? There, there's there's just a shift in how it feels. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, maybe not even a smell, though often mm -hmm. there is kind of a musty yeah. smell. But even sometimes smell aside, it just feels different. Can well, I, yeah, I really think it's the moist cement. And and I think the real the real uh, trick there is, well, let me back up a little bit. I've, I've often had people tell me I am just worried sick. I have a crack in my foundation, and that's where the water's coming. Mm -hmm. Well, whether you have a crack or not, that's not the problem. Mm -hmm. It's not built to be a boat. It shouldn't, it's not built to withstand water coming from. It's not water proof sealed right. like a yeah. bowl. Yeah. The, the trick is to keep the water away from the surrounding of the foundation and keep that dry. And then you won't have to worry about it. I, yeah. Just because you have a crack in the cement, that's, that's kind of neither here nor there because right. it's, if there's moisture, it's going to wick through anyway. Yeah. So um, the trick is keeping the ground around the house with the way you. Um, terrace the land and also your rain gutters and yeah. make sure everything's working right. That's yeah. the trick of not having that that basement smell. Is there, is there anything to this idea that you know in a basement the the soil comes up the wall sometimes only halfway, sometimes mm -hmm. all the way, sometimes three fourths the way. And if you compare that environment to the first floor, where you know outside of the exterior walls it's outside right there's lots of gaps where air can come in yeah and in some ways perhaps you know i just think of basements being stuffy often yeah yeah and does and that have to do with their in soil and there's there's maybe not a lot of opportunity for air to come in and absolutely yeah and i and i just about guarantee you you're uh, on the average your humidity will be higher down in the basement than it is on the yeah on the one floor up yeah, that's which is very interesting. Yeah. So um, with prevention, and let me throw this one in also. Is there's always a not always, but most of the time there's a utility room in the basement. Yeah. That utility room will have a floor drain. Yeah. Um, it's the nastiest drain in the house. It's one of horrendous them. Horrendous because it's dried out. Yeah. 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 It, 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 it's the, yeah. It's it's not like your kitchen sink that you're running water through all the time. Right. It gets this drip. Right over time yeah maybe yeah and it's maybe, just, maybe not yeah it's just a direct it's a direct conduit from the sewer system to your basement mm -hmm. if you don't keep that if you don't do something about that floor drain either keep it full so the p-trap works as it's supposed to or there's some other items you can use to yeah to seal that up but yeah so. okay basements, basements. Um, let's go to another b word okay. bathrooms this is one of we've talked about plentifully yeah. but yeah. can you touch on it yeah bathrooms are uh just notorious. Uh, we talked about mold load. Yeah. Um, I can't say those two words quickly together, so I say mold uh, load. Yeah. But <laughs> um, bathrooms are where if you have an elevated mold load in your home, the mold will um, show up first where there's moisture, and yeah. it's always in the bathroom. Yeah. Um, because you've got steam. Um, the mold is in the house already, and you're going to start growing mold like crazy. Not only just from, you know, the steam and the shower and the, all the water, but you also have one or two sinks in every yep. bathroom plus a toilet. Yeah. And so you can get mold from things such as, uh, okay, the toilet isn't quite seated right on the sill. Yeah. And you can usually tell that by kind of straddling the toilet with your knees and seeing yeah. if you can rock it left or right. And if you can... You've lost seal. It's probably loose. Yeah. And, there, and there's, and so you're wicking water into your subflooring 
and, yeah. and not even realizing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just your caulking can go bad. Yeah. Um, your drains and your sinks, we've talked about those forever. Yeah. And then just the fact that it's, it's, you know, one or two hours every day, it's tremendously high humidity in there. Yeah. So, yeah. And, um, yeah, it's just that it's, of any room in the house, that one has the most moisture in it and the most, I mean, everything you do in there's water, shower, yeah. bath, yeah. water, yeah, sink, water, yeah. toilet. Water. In fact, you mentioned, we talked about one that we hadn't thought of for years is, I don't know what this little piece is called, but if, oh, yeah. Pretend you're laying in your tub and you're looking forward and right below the spigot where the water comes out against the front of the tub, there's this little round plate, right? Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that thing will pop off or unscrew. It's the one where you can either stop flow sometimes. Yeah. I don't know if they do that anymore, but you used to be able to flip Flip it up and it stops the flow. It stops stops the drain. Right. And then you push it down and it'll drain out. Yeah. And then, and then like ours at our house, um, it doesn't even have the flipper. You just do that manually down at the yeah. end itself. But it, yeah. I still have that round plate, right? And why do you have that? I think it's to allow access to the plumbing coming up through. I am not positive, to tell you the truth. And maybe it's an overflow. I think that little hole in the bottom is for overflowing yeah. as well. Yeah. I, I, uh, I'm not a plumber. I don't know what that thing's for, but I know this. When there's you pop a, that thing off, there's mold. mold in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. There definitely is and a the, lot of mold. You know, there. the more I thought about that, the more I thought that that's more serious than we realize because people take baths and the water level goes up over that oftentimes. Yeah. You know, you start reading a book in the bathtub or something and the next thing you know, holy cow, the water's up over that little plate. It's not flooding out yet, but it's... It's over that plate. That's got to be bringing mold into the water that you're soaking in. Bringing some back to it. Yeah. 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 So bathroom. So that's a fun thought for your bath next time. <laughs> yeah. So bathroom's a good place to to really be vigilant. Also, I, I don't know why this popped in my head, but jacuzzi s- tubs. Well, it was jacuzzi oh. tubs, and I was thinking of soap scum. Yeah. Which is really nice re- nutrition for mold. So you have the moisture already. But then if you don't clean your showers and baths regularly, yeah. you get all that buildup of scum. And, and, and of course, that's a prime nu- nutrition source for mold and bacteria. We talked and about... We talked about serratia. Serratia marcescens loves yeah. that soap scum. That's, soap. The, uh, that's the pink, pinkish-orange stuff yeah. that yeah. is actually um, pretty dangerous. Yeah. 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 So keeping the bathroom clean and then... Dry, run the, try to run your, your ventilation fan yep. to get the humidity down as quick as possible. Yeah. And then do, do some additional dehumidifying if necessary, which happens sometimes. So let's go to, so we've, we've done basement, we've done bathrooms. Um, another spot that has a decent amount of water, kitchens. Yes. Uh, when I Talk think about I, kitchens. Yeah. When I think of kitchens, I think of underneath the sink, um, just over the years, older homes, a little drip develops or something you don't realize. Mm-hmm. I once had a gentleman say to me, every house is going to have mold under the sink. <laughs> and I said, no, it shouldn't. It should not. You should not have mold under your sink. Yeah. And apparently he just, every house he'd lived in had mold under the sink <laughs> and he thought that must be normal. Yeah. That's not normal and that's not healthy. I look under every sink when I go I into too. a house. Yeah. Because that's a very common, anytime you have joints, right? Yeah. Water and joints. Mm-hmm. Is, is not a good combination over time. I mean, right. over time, there's going to be some wear and tear. I've also learned some things about the, the material of PVC that it does, it does you know, like many things, it expands and, and contracts. shrinks and yeah. contracts with heat and, and with temperature. So you're, you're turning on hot water to wash the dishes, but then yeah. you're doing some cold water cold to wash water. your vegetables. Yeah. So over time, that expansion and contraction it'll loosen those joints. I've, I've gone under those sinks and grabbed the little ring that tightens yeah. and it is it's loose. completely yeah. loose. It's really loose. Um, so not a bad idea to, to, to check those periodically. You know, I will, I will throw out a tip and this has saved us a few times in our, in our, I would say in our marriage, we've only been <laughs> doing it the last 20 years. We've been married for 30, 30. We've been married for a long time. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> um, my wife puts like a, um, kind of a Tupperware type bin, flat pan. Oh yeah, just a pan that sticks up about one inch. Yeah, um, underneath the sink, and that's where she puts all her like, cleaners. you know, cleaners and yeah types. But 
But if you do have a leak, at least it's not going to the wood yeah. and soaking in. It, yeah. It's going to fill that up, and hopefully you'll see it before it becomes a problem where you've got mold. Yeah, and it's not a bad spot. You know, we, I don't know if we've talked about flood sensors, but I just bought a couple. Yeah, I, that's a great idea. I mentioned, yeah. you know, I had a little flooding in my basement, so I installed some flood sensors um, just inside the window wells of my basement. Yeah. But under sinks is another good spot because, you know, it's one of those where you it could go a while before you notice it if yeah. you don't open that. Yeah. And it could already be soaked through a ton of stuff. Mold could be forming mm -hmm. before you open that. You can realize, oh man, look at this. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, they're, and they're relatively inexpensive. It's one of the most underutilized little home improvement tools, I mm -hmm. think, is a, is a flood sensor. I mean, they're they're cheap. So, yeah. Okay. What? Well, do you want to talk about garbage disposal? I think so, because you you love every every house I go into with you, Mike, you can't it's resist. My, it's going, my pet peeve. Going into a garbage disposal. And I like a good moldy garbage disposal. I feel like I've seen yeah. you do it even without a glove before. Is that? No, no, no. No, you wouldn't no. do that. No, but you love just digging your hands in there. It's disgusting. It is. It's horrendous. And, and people you, don't realize it. Yeah, if you put your nose down to pretty oh, much any one of those. It's awful. It's, yeah. it's horrendous. And So it's keep awful. those cleaned out. The, <laughs> what we're talking about is a little rubber membrane that kind of has little, looks like little Teeth. pizza slices around. Yeah. Around. Yeah, that's and, a good way to do it. But. Yeah. Uh, some, some setups, you can pull those right out and clean them. You can even throw them in the dishwasher if you want and run it through the dishwasher cycle. Some you can't, and you actually have to just clean it while it's in the drain. Yeah. But they're a, they're a really bad design, and just junk collects under there. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, they – and, you know, I often think people get, like, really stinky dish rags or whatever. Yeah. Part of the problem is they're wet, and they're hanging out right by yeah. that garbage disposal thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. whatever that thing he's called yeah and and that thing's shooting out spores or whatever and then next thing you know why are our dish towels stink so bad and uh so all of that is creating mold and mold toxins that's that's very unhealthy yeah if you if you reach down in there through that hole where yeah. you know the food goes i i would suggest that you turn your disposal off first. off yeah first okay if, it, if it's going <laughs> don't, do it. don't do it just listen for that <laughs> it it shouldn't feel slimy anywhere in there. Am I correct? No, correct. Which, yeah. you know, I think of any garbage, garbage garbage disposal I put my hand in, they're all slimy. But, yeah. I, you know, I know how to clean them out real well. Yeah. And it, it's kind of, it, nothing feels better than a garbage disposal where you put your hand down in there and it just feels. It's one of my favorite things. Yeah. yeah. I know. You love it yeah. way more than I, I do. I love a good, clean garbage disposal thingy. I can't think of a house I've gone into where you haven't made your way over there. And no, it's, I think there. it's a huge issue. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. I think it's yeah. an overlooked uh, thing for many of us. And, so. and why we're on kitchens, just real quick, one more thing is uh, let's discuss my hate for not only the garbage disposal thingy, but sponges. Okay, yeah. I think sponges are one of the scourges of the earth. Tell, tell us more. That's that's they're, a strong, that's strong language. Yeah, <laughs> it is very strong language. <laughs> COVID and then sponges. sponges scourges of the earth. Sponges are just disgusting. They are. They hold the moisture way too long, yeah. and they get moldy and mild. I I shouldn't say mildew. I I, I get mad whenever anybody uses that word. Mildew inside a house is not a thing. Mildew on plants is a thing. Yeah. They get moldy, yeah. and full of bacteria. And uh, yeah, I don't think anybody should have a, a sponge in their house. I it's, think it's terrible. Yeah, it, it it lets lots of moisture in, but doesn't let any air in. Right. Hardly. Yeah. So it just soaks in. The it air. just soaks in the mold. Yeah. yeah, and then everyone, they keep you, people using way too long, right? Way, way too long. Way yeah. beyond their lifespan. And... If you're cleaning your sink with a sponge and you get done and dry off your hands and your hands smell like mold, something's seriously wrong, <laughs> yeah. you know? We've all been there. Yeah, though. I know. I have. Yeah. Well, I, I've, I've certainly been there. I've, I've had it with dish rags, too. Yeah, dish rags, for sure. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's a, uh, there are products out there that you can you can wash and launder that deter that from happening. Yeah, they're actually pretty effective. That are that are decently yeah. effective. So, um, yeah. I I don't know that we want to talk about those right now, but yeah. give think, us give us a call. We'll tell you. <laughs> give yeah. us a call. We'll tell you. We have some yeah. you know that we've tried out and we like. So, um, so that's kitchens. And then as far as cleaning that out, Mike, what do you how do you clean uh, out those uh, drains? There's a few things that work really well. I love vinegar, just straight vinegar. Now tell me this. Yeah. Uh, if I do just straight vinegar, 
you know, I often, when I'm cleaning out, I'm using a professional grade product usually, but I get a sizzle yeah. out of those, yeah. out of those, uh, those kitchen uh, drains, you yeah. know, you pour, you pour some product in there and there's that interaction with, with the live mold and the product right? and, and it sizzles. Yeah. Does that happen with vinegar as well? I'm assuming yeah. it does. Yeah, it will. Uh -huh. but I typically don't use yeah, vinegar. I'm it using will. stronger stuff. Uh -huh. That's actually a fun test. Yeah, it pour, is. pour some vinegar down your drain, a decent amount, and see if it turns kind of white and sizzles. You'll, you'll, yeah. yeah, you often see like some white bubbling or, or, or yeah, sizzling, and then put your ear down yep. there and see if you can and hear it. It sounds yeah. sizzly. That thing's full of bacteria mold. You've got mold and bacteria. Yeah. And when you clean it out, you should be able to pour vinegar down there and not hear it sizzle. Correct. And not see it sizzle. Correct. That's a, that's maybe a good indicator that you've yeah. done your job. Yeah. So. That's a good um, point, Jer. Really good point. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> okay. So let's uh let's do one more and then we'll take a break. Okay. Um so we're gonna go we're gonna go from the kitchen to attics. Um, yes. We have talked about these, but it never ceases to amaze me at how how prone attics are to, to mold. And yeah. tell me what tell me what we should know about attics. Well, the the problems. I, in fact, I was just in one up in Oregon yesterday. Oh, were you? Yeah. How are they? How are the attics in Oregon? Well, they're pretty moldy. Pretty pretty darn moldy. <laughs> yeah. Um, what happens is, generally speaking, the mold is going to begin to grow on the north side because yeah. that's the coldest side, and so that's where the water is going to condensate the most, and it just starts to grow mold like crazy. So, so the north side is maybe a couple degrees different, right? It's not much. Yeah. It's it's incredible. Yeah. I don't know exactly, but yeah. probably a few degrees. I, I've said this. I think I've, you've heard me say this before. It's amazing if we could really pin it down, how close every surface in every home is to growing mold. Yeah. We're within a few temperature points and a few humidity points of of condensating. Yeah. You know? And uh, so that north side. That north side is, and, and the same thing, we'll probably talk about this later, but the same thing with windowsills on the, on north, the north side of the side, house. Yeah. yeah. It's just... It's a tough deal. Now, I will say this. I, I do not believe that the interior air of an addict ends up in a home for the most part. I've been in so many attics, and I know that the air quality is absolutely horrendous in an attic. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe we're getting... If that air was ending up in our home, we would all be really, really sick. Yeah. So um, I don't think... Just my personal opinion, um, I don't think addicts are a cause of illness very often but i do think when you're trying to sell a home and an inspector finds mold you can you're faced with having to do something yeah so yeah i you know if you think about you know this is kind of rudimentary but you think about every part of a home ha has a purpose right yeah. it plays a role the role of the roof is to keep anything from getting inside the house like mm -hmm. it's you know you think in terms of water it plays probably the most crucial role of any part yeah. of the home in, yeah. in terms of keeping water outside of it. Yeah. And it and it it has to do it across a larger area than anything else. And so yeah. um it's got a big role to play, you know. Yeah. It's it's a star player. We're asking a lot of it. We're yeah. asking a lot. Yeah. And you know, who we ask a lot, you know, we ask it a lot, but also it, it has a small uh, small margin for error. Yeah. So yeah. if it if it messes up in even just one spot, yeah. You know, you, and, and the problem with the attic is it goes into the attic, which who goes into their attic? Right. Not very, people, yeah. you know, I, I'd be curious if there's a study out there. I, the average person probably goes into their attic once every five years. I don't know. I, I'm, I, I bet it's not even that often. Ten years? Yeah. yeah. I'm sure there's people out there that have never been in their attics. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah it, I'm sure there's people that live in some people's attics and they don't know they're up there. <laughs> yeah but well, maybe not i don't know just guessing yeah, yeah. it's probably probably happening <laughs> so yeah i mean you know this this covering on our houses it, yeah just pinhole leaks um you know the common thing we have here with wind is it it, it does tear off roofs in whole sometimes but oh, it often yeah. just tears off like a shingle or two here or or many yeah. or many yeah. on a big storm it'll tear out a bunch of shingles yeah i just went up on on our roof and noticed three crown shingles missing Again, it didn't look like, you know, anything major had happened, but but that's the kind of thing where where it becomes a problem. Yeah. yeah you, and you, you hardly even notice it unless you get up. You there. know, when I was younger, Jeremy, I remember that the big thing with building 
is we got to get the roof dried in. They call it dried in, you know. That means you put the roof on and at least get the tar paper down before it storms. Yeah. I don't see, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see builders being that freaked out anymore yeah. about getting the roof dried in, you yeah. know. And it's it's kind of alarming because, um, you know, you, you don't, you don't get the roof on and the tar paper down and it rains or snows, you're just asking for trouble in that house down the road. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another big one, you know, we're kind of dealing with this here in our building here. I, yeah. I don't know if I told, oh, you were gone. You were out of town, but yeah. I went to the HOA meeting uh, for this, this, this big building we're, we're in and we have some trees that are coming up in the front uh -huh. and and they're starting to cause issues on the roof of some people's units. Um, and the leaves are definitely starting to plug up some of the yeah. drains. Yeah. And, um, and and then you have kind of that, you know, like you were talking about water up against the house. Yeah. It's starting to kind of pool water in, in certain areas. And um, so the roof, the roof has, you know, the gutters, which, you know, can have issues. And then I've seen trees you know, mess up with, mess up roofs plenty of times. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then that can mess with your water. And and then even in the winter, ice dams, we see, the, oh, see yeah. that a lot. Explain in... my dams here. Cause I don't know if everyone's had those. So ice dams, I used to really have a good handle on this and I, I haven't, haven't dove into it as much lately, but it's really the freezing and the warming and the freezing and the warming effect of on your roof. Um, and it's usually on the colder sides that give you trouble, mm -hmm. but it will start to work up under the shingles mm -hmm. and present water into the attic if you're not real careful. The The fix for that is if you have a side of your roof that's notoriously cold and doesn't want to melt, mm -hmm. like the rest of the roof, is to put heat cables mm -hmm. along there to keep that draining properly. Keep it warm. But yeah, ice damming is, is really an issue. Okay. All right. That's probably good for roofs. Let's... Uh... Let's take just a couple minutes for a sponsor, and then we'll we'll get back to uh, the most necessary things to know, or at least some of the most necessary things to know in your home when when thinking of mold. Did you know the levels of some hazardous pollutants in indoor air have been found to be up to 70 times greater than in outdoor air? But who's monitoring that for you? Check out MyPureProducts.net for the latest in monitoring devices and DIY mold test kits. Take control of your environment with MyPureProducts.net. Order your air filters through Pure Products with the February Filter Frenzy Sale. Get 20% off all filters that are pre-treated with an antimicrobial agent, creating a healthy environment for you and your family. Visit MyPureProducts.net and use promo code FILTERFUN20 for a discounted and pre-treated filter today. All righty, welcome back. Um, we're going to continue kind of going over some of the places in our homes where mold might be lurking. Um, you mentioned earlier, Mike, even some of the cleanest homes you've ever seen still have mold. And, and you might ask, how could that be? And so some of these things we're covering are maybe going to give someone a clue of how that might be. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's like I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, it's oftentimes, I know I say this over and over again, but it's oftentimes the cumulative effect of a lot of little places. I mean, when you think about, you know, 150,000, spores can sit on the tip of a pin mm -hmm. even minuscule areas of mold a lot of them can be a lot of mold in your home yeah. and i think i've mentioned this before too because you know we'll do an experiments here with mold where we you know we grow them in petri dishes for various things mm -hmm. i mean a quarter size patch of mold has absolutely rocked my world yeah i agree and your world. yeah just by standing by it just by being in yeah. the vicinity of it and and if I recall it, it wasn't even like stacky. Uh, I can't remember what I can't remember what it wasn't though. I know it wasn't, it wasn't stacky, stacky and it wasn't yeah. ketomium. Uh -huh. It wasn't the big, you know, the big two yeah. that we most commonly see. It might have been pinasp or something, which can be pretty toxic. Can be but, bad, yeah. but we're talking five feet away that's in a covered petri dish. For about five a, minutes. For about five minutes, yeah. a quarter quarter size patch of mold, and it just made us both feel like, like garbage. Horrible. Yeah. Absolutely horrible. In so, fact, we we have a how big is our warehouse? I don't it's know. Nine thousand. Nine ten thousand square foot warehouse with thirty foot ceilings. Yeah. We had to put it outside the door. Yeah. Because it was bothering us so and bad. it was covered. Yeah. <laughs> and it was kind of sealed into a plastic petri dish. So yeah. I I think that's that's I say that because 
you know, you talk about the cumulative effect yeah. of small things. Yeah. It really doesn't take a lot to just mess you up. No. And, and also this, I've read this over the years in a number of different places, is when you have various types of mold, mm -hmm. they kind of will compete against each other. Mm -hmm. And they'll send out their toxins to kind of beat up on the other mold. Yeah. So I've often felt like the people who were the sickest probably had more than one incident of mold in their home. Yeah. Um, like maybe they had a flood 10 years ago and then they had another flood you know, two years ago, and then they never really cleaned it up right the first time. So now they've got all these little poxes mold throughout the home. Mm -hmm. I think you really kind of create a toxic nightmare, nightmare about that home with competing, competing molds as well. As well. Yeah, yeah, mold, mold gangs. gangs. Mold, mold gangs, gangs, if you will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, the molds, molds and, and the fungus. <laughs> <laughs> that was all in a well place. <laughs> never never cease to amaze. amaze. Um, <laughs> Okay, okay we just, just like to talk, talk about, about a couple more items, and, and then we're going to continue this kind of home checklist. checklist. And, and again, again, we've covered these, but we're kind of adding, adding slash reminding of, of some of these basic, uh, basic, you know, I guess areas in the home that we need to be aware of uh, as homeowners, as remediators. And so um, we kind of went, went from attics and roofs. roofs. Let's, let's go. go let's, let's go down, down under. Down, down, down okay. Down into the, you know, crawl space, space areas or, um, yeah, we, yeah, talked, we talked about, about basements. basements. Crawl, crawl space is a little, little bit different dynamically. dynamically. Can, you Can you talk, talk about, about that? that? Yeah. yeah. Um, first, first of all, I, I mean, if, if I had a, a child, child who was building, building a home and if, if I, I gave you the advice on what to do building, building a home, I'd say do not have, have a crawl space. space. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I, there, there for a long, long time, I said, if you show me a crawl space, I'll show you mold. It's just, they go hand in hand. Didn't you just tell me but, you know, earlier today that you talked to a lady who put her six, six kids in a crawl space, space to live? Yes. yes. So, so, so the, don't, don't have one, and if you have one, don't put your kids in there? Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 yeah, that's, that's rule number two. two. <laughs> okay. yeah. there's, there's about four crawl space, space rules. One, one is don't have one, two is don't put your kids, kids in there for a season. season. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see other next week. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. But, but yeah, yeah cross spaces, spaces are, are just, just they're, they're, they're they're tough because they're always going to be wet because they're down in, in you know underground. Um, we, we talked about, about um, water, water table, table or our you know Tom, our friend in Australia, Australia talks about rising dam. dam. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're just they're, they're going to be problematic. And over, over the years, there's been different companies coming up with different solutions, none of which are the silver bullet for this. I. I respectfully disagree with a lot of notable inspectors that say you need to have a vapor barrier. I, I've never seen where a vapor barrier helps the situation. It seems like it always hurts the situation, in my opinion. I think it traps the moisture. And then again, go back to if you were a mulch borer, what would you want? If I was a mulch borer in a crawl space, I would want a little plastic to probably create some nice humidity, nice humidity, and trap the air. Trap the air. The air can't get to me, so I'm not going to get dried out. Yeah. yeah, so um, I, don't I don't like, I don't, don't like, like uh, vapor barriers at all. Mm -hmm. the, the best thing, thing is lots of ventilation, ventilation and airflow. Air um, some, some people, people like to think that the best thing, thing to do is put conditioned air into, into your crawl space, space just as if it was a, a fan or whatever. I don't think that's, that's a great idea either. Yeah. Um, just, just keep it as dry as you can and as much air movement. Yeah. Um, you may need to put um, dehumidifiers in there. Okay. So you're okay with dehues in yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it gets, like you said, the you know, we talked about basements being yeah. more humid than the top floor. Yeah. Similarly, those crawl spaces can get real stuffy. Yeah. And, and humid. Oh. Um, what, what else dynamically about a crawl space makes it a place that you would recommend that people don't even have in their house? Um, well, oftentimes that's where they'll put the, most of the duct work mm -hmm. for the first floor and the, they may actually put the HVAC system or the furnace down there. Yeah. And I've always felt like that's a horrible idea because even though they say your furnace is fairly airtight, yeah, you're still going to pull contaminated air from the crawl space through your ducting. Yeah. I don't care how airtight you think that is. Venturi effect is an amazing physics. Yeah. 
physics effect. Yeah. And as that air passes through the ductwork, it's going to pull air through a crack or whatever in a joint yeah. into your living space and, and cause trouble. So I don't like crawl spaces and I don't like furnaces in crawl spaces. Yeah. That's rule number three. That's number three. Number four next one, week. Yeah. If you do have one, do not put your HVAC unit down. Let's go ahead and tell them number four. Okay. Okay, number four. If you do have a crawl space and you do have your kids sleeping down there and you do have a furnace, don't let the kids sleep on the furnace. <laughs> That's number four. Okay. Because, which is the point I was going to make. It's very, very, very uncomfortable. <laughs> it is. It is. And, you know, this is on my mind because I yeah. was at a place yesterday that had mold from floor to ceiling, 30 feet high ceilings, mm. uh, probably... 80 feet by 30 feet, and then another one 30 feet by 40 feet. I don't know. There's yeah. tons of mold. And it's because it was a commercial building, uh, and they were cooling uh, the one room down to 36 degrees, and then the other room was around right. 60 degrees. Yeah. And so that that wall between those two is where it just formed all the way. That the temperature wall. change. Yeah. yeah, we talked about the north side effect. Yeah. I've seen it happen similarly in the crawl space. It's it's really hot down there. Then you have your H your your air conditioner yeah. is on, so those the ducting gets freezing. Yeah. Then you've got this freezing ducting meets this hot crawl space, and then they just start dripping. Yeah. And then you've got, you know, maybe you didn't have a water yeah. table that was high, but now right. all of a sudden that soil's wet. Yeah. And and I think it was you and I a couple of weeks ago. I remember talking to to uh, one of our licensees about they used to wrap the ducting yeah with you know insulated essentially so that it wasn't you know it wasn't hot and it's cold there's a little barrier there yeah but then i had him peel back the the this is insulation on the outside of the duct right i had him peel it back and he's like oh yeah it's nasty yeah. under there yeah so it, it, it like you said rule number three don't put one down there no. or two no that's uh that's two three no, one is don't have one. Right. No, two, yes. don't put your right, kids that's in there. Right. Yeah. I've covered this so many times, I should know this by heart. Yeah. <laughs> two, don't put your kids down there. Three, two. don't have the HVAC unit down Four, don't let your kids sleep on the HVAC system. Yeah. yeah. In your crawl space. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, that's good for crawl spaces. Yeah. Just um, lots of ventilation, lots of air, maybe a dehumidifier. Yeah. Or a sump pump if you've really got issues. And so. And like the attic. As detestable as it sometimes is to go into those, you really ought to do it or have someone look in those. Check into it, yeah. At least, I don't know, at least once a year. Yeah. Because who knows? Something can go wrong and you just never, ever see it yeah. until it's... it's Until you got the big uh, the big bubble coming down from the ceiling that's full of water. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, yeah exactly. Okay, we're going to talk about one more today and then we'll continue this um, next time, Mike, okay. if we can continue this list. Um, uh, flooring, and, and particularly underneath flooring. Um, this can be tricky because it's underneath flooring. You can't always see it. Yeah. Um, do you have any experiences with that? Yeah. Uh, more than I wish. But what 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 usually leads to mold under flooring? Well, you, it's usually a leak um, that's gone on for except. Well, I I shouldn't even say that. Any kind of leak or a flood, you're going to get water underneath the flooring. It's going to find its way under there. Yeah. The problem is some of these floors nowadays. Like I'll give you a perfect example. If you had a like a linoleum, is that what they used to call it, linoleum, or a yeah. you know a solid vinyl piece of vinyl? Oh, yeah. Or they so. even have you know yeah, yeah. fake wood floors that look beautiful. Yeah. But they're they're waterproof. Oh, the laminate. Yeah. If you get water under those, which often happens when you have a leak because it'll come in down the wall or something, yeah. and then, and then seep underneath that flooring. You almost have to pull that flooring up to get that dried out yeah it's it's just it's gonna stay wet forever, forever. yeah and it's a laminate's a pretty decent food source for mold yeah i think so you say? well I mean, yeah and it's probably sitting on some flooring as well which is uh, yeah. yeah yeah not as good as maybe paper but it's still not bad yeah yeah it'll it'll, it'll definitely grow mold unchecked for a long time so yeah. um and then and then tile and, and yeah tile's not as big as it was back in maybe the 80s yeah Everybody seemed like they were tiling their kitchens yeah. back in the 80s. Um, a lot of people didn't seal their grout. Yeah. And, and the, you know, you keep mopping it every week, yeah. mop your tile. And I don't know where I don't know where we thought that water was going that landed in the grout. But it's it's where it's going is it's giving the mold some moisture. Yeah. yeah. So um, 
uh, you know, a lot of problems on any of the homes were just defective um, building techniques. Yeah. People just didn't realize. Even, even uh, Brandon, my son, he has a brand new house. Yeah. And in the master shower, they it's, it's really pretty. They have like stacked rock. Yeah. And the guy told Brandon that the rocks are so tight together that he can't get any kind of grout in there. So it's just it's gonna have to just rock be like on that. rock, huh? Yeah. Is all it's keeping the and, out. And they, Ooh. and you know, Brandon obviously with his background said, "Hey, that's not gonna be okay." And they said, "No, no, it's okay because you have, you have uh, sheetrock that's waterproof behind there." No, that's still not still not okay. Yeah. And so he's going to get somebody up there to take a look at it. But um, yeah, just bad building techniques and and people that underestimate the the power of water. Yeah. You know whether it's a leak, a flood, or even something like a shower where every day, day in, day out, you take a yeah. shower. If there's any kind of a breach in the surface anywhere, water will find that. Yeah. And can cause trouble. So same thing with flooring. Yeah. Um, like I say, when you have a flood, it will find its way underneath that flooring yeah. somehow. Yeah. And, you know, I'm thinking of, you know, all the spots where you talked about coming down walls. Yeah. I'm thinking about other spots where water is going to meet flooring. Again, I'm kind of going back to bathrooms because it's very common for the spillover from showers and baths yeah. To, yeah. to sit on that flooring. Yeah. And it's it's one of those spots that you're not alarmed because it's not a leak. Right, but but it happens every right. day. I'll just throw my cow down there. Today. Yeah, yeah. If you even do that, yeah, you, know, you might just move on with your day. And then the other one that jumps out at me is a lot of times you have a deck off your kitchen door. Yeah, right. And that deck maybe is letting the water flow back into the doorway itself. Yeah, and then it works its way. I've seen many many homes that that first three or four feet of the inside of that doorway. Yeah. There's mold underneath that flooring because wow. because the deck maybe built up with snow or something. Whatever happened, yeah. it, it ran underneath the, the door threshold and got into the underneath the floor. So it's just it's one of those things you have to keep an eye on. You know, at all times, be be wary of where water could get. Yeah, and don't think it's just going to go away on its own. Let me let me throw one more at you okay. before we close. Um, carpet. Yeah. So carpet getting soaked or, or drenched or flooded or whatever. Yeah. Talk about that. Um first of all, carpet's icky, I think. Carpet's what? Oh icky. icky. Yeah, I don't like carpet. Yeah. Why uh, why don't you like it? From a mold perspective? Or just Yeah, from a mold perspective, one of the number number one things mold loves is dust, right? Mm -hmm. I mean that the army test is gather dust and then figure out how much mold is in that dust. Yeah. Um if you think of if you have a hardwood floor, yeah. And you think about when you 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 know have the little soft um, sweeper that you kind of go through like you're sweeping the basketball floor. Yeah. And after just one or two days, there's a significant amount of dust or whatever is on there. Yeah. You can even run a vacuum over your hardwood floor and sweep again, and there's still a lot of dust. You yeah. Know? There's just a lot of dust on flooring, and then in my mind, carpet just gives a place for all that dust to kind of find a home. Yeah. And I, I you know. It's great to vacuum as often as you can, but it's it's not going to be perfect. It's just a place where you're gonna. It's just not clean. It's not. It's not uh, clean at all. So, uh, carpet should absolutely never be in a kitchen or a bathroom. Yeah, that's yeah, that's crazy talk. And then when you do have uh, flooding, you need to pull back the carpet, get it dried out as soon as you can, and you probably can't save the padding. Mm. That probably just needs to go. Yeah. Because that's kind of like a sponge, right? You talked about yeah. sponges yeah. earlier. It's like a sponge under your carpet. Yep. yep. Yeah. And just... I will say this too: is in in the last twenty years, they've come out with this pretty cool, like waterproof padding, carpet padding. Yeah. Well, if you have rising damp or you know water table that is bringing water up through From your cement bottom. floor, yeah, you may not even know you have an issue under there because the padding's waterproof. Yeah. And so you don't feel anything while you're walking on the carpet. Yeah. All of a sudden, your basement is like, well, man, it, sick or... it stinks down here. Yeah. Or you start feeling sick. Yeah. That, that could be going on. So. Yeah. To your comment about the dirty, dirty carpets, when I was relaying carpet in my basement just a couple of weeks ago, the guy that was uh, a professional helping me mm -hmm. lay the carpet, you know, he'd give me little lessons and pointers here yeah. and there because I've not 
I've not done the carpet stretching myself before, but he's mm-hmm. like, he's like, all the dirt. Well, you know, you've probably heard a carpet guy say this: the the pad's more important than the carpet. Have you ever heard? Yeah, I actually have heard that. Yeah, yeah. And and I was like, oh, tell me more. And he's like, well, he, he named a few things, but one thing he said is the dirt and stuff all ends up ultimately down into the pad. You know, it it, it th- that carpet is it's not, porous. It's yeah. very porous. Yeah. So, so grime and dirt and 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 a lot of that makes its way down to the pad and and I guess I guess nice pad good pad is more you know resistant to that abrasion kind of proof or whatever. yeah so yeah I have heard that if you vacuum your carpet I mean it's common sense but if you vacuum your carpet often it's a lot better for the longevity of the carpet than if you don't do anything you know yeah yeah and some people think the office like you're wearing your carpet out by vacuuming it so yeah. much. No, you need to get that grip because that's what's tearing your carpet yeah. apart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, well, I think that's a good, um, good coverage of flooring. And um, like I said, we'll we'll continue um, some more things that uh, we think are valuable to consider in our homes when when troubleshooting mold and when looking for mold, when trying to build a mold-free home and environment, which we all want to do. Um, but sometimes it feels overwhelming. Yeah. You know, it yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. talked about this before, like, um, cause we're trying to come up with a nicer checklist than, than we've heretofore created so that it's easier. I mean, there's so many maintenance items, mold aside, yeah. you've got other stuff that yeah. you need to, to keep on top of to, as a homeowner, to keep your, your home, you know, in good health and condition. And, yeah. and the mold checklist is, is, I feel like very quite quite extensive, and, yeah. and some of them, like you said, some of them you got to do every year. Some of them you should probably check every week or two, or yeah. thirty yeah. months, or you know, every yeah. everyone's a little different. So it is overwhelming, but I think the more we talk about it, the more we remind ourselves, you know, we can stay on top of it. So yeah. the ultimate goal is to make sure people understand that mold is dangerous, yeah. and to treat it with respect. Yeah, so. treat it as for you know. I'm trying to think of. What are the most important maintenance items that a homeowner thinks of when they're, you know, I'm trying to think, well, maybe mowing your lawn or I don't know. I feel like the the mold stuff is at the bottom of this. Even if, even if someone does know, like I should probably clean my drains out. Right. Or that, that one's very bottom. Way down. Right. Yeah. I mean, even filters, which is one of the more obvious ones is, is often at the bottom. Right. So you think about, uh, you know, cleaning the membrane in our kitchen sinks, like you said, that's really low. Not for me, Jer. Not, for, Not for me, but for everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Not for you, but yeah. for everyone else. Every With your Sunday, help. Every Sunday, <clears throat> excuse me, when I clean up dinner. You check it? I do. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All yeah. right. Well, um, so long, and we'll see you guys next time. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Mold Matters Podcast. Be sure to subscribe for more in-depth information on mold illness and recovery.